Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems. Very biased collection as usual. Um, we are continuing our little series about the Millennium Surprise problems. So here's one which I really like a lot and which I uh, really don't dare to, to pronounce because the names are very difficult. Anyway, I call it I call it a conjecture. Um, so most of the Millennium Surprise products, uh, problems are still conjectures, of course. Um, maybe not, of course, but they, they still are. And this one is this one is one of my favorites. Uh, so counting, it's really a counting question. I try to boil it down as much as possible. But what I really like about it is um, this is was one of the first examples where the conjecture actually arose from computer calculations. So nowadays modern mathematics is like gets more and more into conjectures and maybe even theorems and whatever. They really come from computer calculations, computer aided conjectures, whatever you want to call them. Eventually, we are really hoping for computer generated conjectures, really meaning that there's no human involved anymore, just computer generated. We are not there yet. So right now there's still, most of the time there's still humans involved and eventually what we want is, well, so for, for conjectures, for example, in this case, uh, or for theorem verification, what we really in the long run want is that the computer does everything itself, which is much better. But anyway, this was one of the first examples from the 50s, 60s, where a computer played like the key role in getting the conjecture. So there were a lot, a lot of, lot of, lot of calculations involved. And I'm going to uh, show you a few how to do those calculations, essentially, um, using not, not the same systems as they used in the, in the 60s and 50s, uh, you will see. OK, so let's jump right into it. The, the problem is actually not so difficult to state, um, so it's about rational solutions, integer solutions, whatever you like, of certain type of equations. And that's like a really classical question in mathematics. It goes back to the old Greeks, at least, um, the, the old Egypt or Babylon, they already wanted kind of to solve uh, certain type of equations. And at, at that point of in time, certain type of equations really meant equations which are now called, called Diophantine equations, something like, well, think about Pythagorean triples. So find solutions to a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and not just any solutions. So complex number solutions are a bit boring uh, in this setting. So let, let's say we find integer solutions or for our video today, more rational solutions. Like a really classical question. People did that in the, like a long time ago, as I said, it goes back to the old Greeks at least. Turns out that whatever, most of the, well, some of the most famous math problems, that's the right way around, some of the most famous math problems about, uh, about whether those uh, solutions exist or not. Think about Fermat's last theorem. And it turns out that in general, this is like terribly difficult, like terribly difficult. So it's not happening. Um, you can make it very precise if you want, but anyway, it's like really difficult. And it turns out that it's not really obvious why. Let me ignore, let me ignore that it's not really obvious why. Let me just claim it is. And that's what we go for in this video. Is that a certain type of equations uh, called elliptic curves. Let's let's just say they are of the following form: y squared equals x cubed plus ax plus b. That's called the Weierstrass form, in case you're an expert on elliptic curves. But anyway, for this video, that's a definition of an elliptic curve. Any condition of this form. And it turns out that they are still very interesting. They're not trivial, or well, not trivial at all, but they're like much, much easier. And there's a whole field in mathematics just studying elliptic curves, essentially because it's kind of at the border of what, what can be done. So if you go down in the in the complexity of, of the equation, it's too easy. And if you go up, it's too difficult. So then most of the interesting mathematics will happen around where you can say something. And that's essentially how I like to think about uh, those elliptic curves. And we are, as I said, we're looking for some nice rational solutions for those curves. And here are those examples for those curves, like real pictures of those uh, curves, two of them as an example here. Right? OK, and this is how they look like, this is a fun picture. This is how they look like uh, over finite fields. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to well, just make it really easy. Just go to FP itself instead of general finite fields. But anyway, so really just integers uh, mod P up on division by P. And I ask for solutions, well, which are not rational, but which exist in 
in those in those things. And this is really easy to find because, well, an elliptic curve is really just now a pair, whatever, uh, x and y. X and y are probably really bad notation because, well, x and y are my, my uh, what is it, my variables. So let's say m and n, whatever, m and n of numbers in fp squared, in this case, that satisfy uh, well, our, our little equation, right? So just a bunch of bunch of numbers. And it turns out that this is like a really, it's like a beautiful, beautiful. It's, it's not trivial at all, uh, but it's kind of beautiful. And there are like many, many really fast algorithms to count the number of uh, solutions in that field on a curve. So I have something in the description that you can run in the MACMA online calculator, which is also linked in the description. And it's just really fantastic. So let's zoom in here. So I'm kind of cheating a little bit. I don't take FP itself. I take a slightly different field, uh, the field of order two to the 160. So that's a very, very large state. It's a very, very large field. So field of order 260. And I set up, set up a certain elliptic curve. And I asked for the number of solutions of that elliptic curve in that field. And there's a tremendous amount of them, uh, whatever that number is, tremendous amount. And it took the online calculator 0 0.05 seconds to do that. So you can test that yourself. It's kind of fun. It's like, it's like so fast. It's ridiculous how fast that is. Okay, so uh, finding solutions mod P of, an, of those uh, curves we're interested in is like easy. It's like a walk in the park. It's a super, super fantastic. It's fantastically um, exciting in some sense how easy it is to find those solutions. And the computer can do that in in 0 0.05 seconds for a field of order two to the 160. And it's not like I used the fancy computer. I said again, I used an online tool that you can actually access yourself, uh, linked in the description. So that's fantastic. It's really fast, right? That's, that's just great. So the dream is use a solution that you get easy, the mod P solution. So say something else about the solutions that are actually really tricky to get, kind of the rational solutions, right? And that's kind of the hope you can have. You see easy solutions to get something about the difficult solutions. Okay, and people tried that obviously. I mean, this is just just a, a tempting question. Like something that is really easy to get, something that is really hard to get. Maybe they are somehow related. And the question people address is kind of a fun one. So um, on an elliptic curve, you actually have a structure of an abelian group, which I define in pictures up here. Doesn't really matter. Um, if you don't want to look at the pictures for this video, it really does only matter that every elliptic curve gives you this, an abelian group, which I call uh, E. So the rational points form an abelian group, right? That's what you want to do. So EQ, it's not quite solving the equation in rationals, but it comes very close to that. The, so the rational points form an abelian group. And kind of the basic fact about the abelian groups here in this setting. Not quite so basic, but let's just say, let's just call it the fact is that this abelian group has some uh, z to the r, the standard abelian group, some r, some certain number, and some finite guys. Um, and we're interested in this number r, which is usually called the rank. This kind of gives you the idea of how many rational solutions there are, because there will be orbits of those rational solutions. Uh, some of them are finite. OK, let's ignore the finite ones. And some of them are infinite, and we care about the kind of the orbits of the infinite rational points on that curve. And it's really surprisingly little is known about this number r. It's ridiculous how, what is not known about this number r. So I think if I'm not completely mistaken here, uh, it's not even strictly speaking known whether r can get arbitrary large, or whether it kind of the, the, I think no nobody really believes that that r is kind of bounded. Um, but I think that the, the biggest curve that is known now in 2023, end of 2023, so the biggest rank that is known is something like 20, around 20, which is ridiculously small. Anyway, um, so can anyone determine the rank? That's kind of a good question. It's kind of essentially asking, can we find the irrational solutions, but maybe a little bit in a different formulation or maybe a bit of a weaker type of state. Can we determine the rank of the elliptic curve? And I say it again, not much is known about that rank. Um, yeah. So it would be kind of awesome if you can relate that to a calculation that's easy. So this calculation is not easy. The program that I, the MACMA, MACMA is fantastic. MACMA can do it actually. Link in the description in case you want to run it. 
but it's uh, not as fast, not as ridiculously fast as the other one. And it turns out that uh, for an elliptic curve of rank R, the following should be true. And it's known for, as far as I know, only for the case where R is zero, which is kind of a little bit of a boring case, namely when you don't have any <laughs> kind of infinite orbits of rational solutions anyway. So let's say NP is the number of points on E mod P, the ones that are easy to get. Okay, fine. And we set up a certain function, which really just, the only real, real input here is NP. So this is really easy to get. Okay, so that function is a function from N to Q, so we could plot it. Um, it will be those, in this plot here, this is a kind of the spread of the, the what is the bluish points, because it's kind of crazy up in So this function is easy to get. And the conjecture, which is exactly this conjecture we're talking about here, uh, states that asymptotically, or for very large, large primes, this function is given by a constant, whatever that constant is, times log of x, so the function is in x, log of x to the r. And here's our little r. Okay, so you could double check that. Here's an example. For example, you take that curve, fine, I think, uh, red is the expected value, so the one you get from um, from uh, the function, and blue is the, the sorry, the, the one you get from the asymptotic, and blue is the actual value, the one you get from from the function itself. And you can see it works uh, reasonably reasonably well. Like. And why is that amazing? That is amazing for the following reason. Well, there's the function here in green, this one here, is like easy to get. It's like right? It's easy to calculate. And you now just compute the blue one, which is easy to get. And you see whether it really behaves like a log to the R. And then you can get the rank of uh, your elliptic curve, right? So if it behaves like log to the R, you just figure out what log it is that it behaves like. And that's not difficult. So if that conjecture would be true, then there would be a quite efficient way to compute the rank of elliptic curves from reductions what P. And then there are some. This statement is again crazy, like the Riemann hypothesis. There are like a trillion of different implications if that this theorem, if that this theorem, this conjecture, this conjecture is true. Yeah, that's absolutely excellent, right? So we have this conjecture which relates a numerical question that a computer can address easily and a much more difficult question how to find the rank. And yeah, so what they did is they think that they computed a lot of those graphs in. So in the in the fifties and sixties, and that's where the conjecture comes from. It was one of the, as I said, one of the first conjectures that arose from computer calculations, because those numbers are actually not so difficult to get. Yeah, and you can just really, really do this. And I did that, and you can just uh, link it, it's linked down in the description if you want to run it in the online calculator. Um, it works really, really well. So here it will com converge somewhere to something around two. Uh, so it's computes. It's essentially this program should, if there's no typo, obviously, it should compute um, the what is it, the constant in front. Okay, and this conjecture was really born in the 1950s by computer help. They were not using magma. I'm just using magma because it's very convenient, and I'm using the <laughs> built-in function to do that. So super easy. Uh, they did it differently. Obviously, had a different computer. This, Computers in the 1950s were different from the computers. They essentially were the same, but let's say how to access a computer was really, really different in the 1950s. Anyway, so this is really fantastic. We can compute R if the conjecture uh, would be true. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I also hope to see you next time.